Hi, John Green, and welcome to Vlogbrothers. I am Hank Green. And have you seen my budget? I thought I had some. Last week I sent you a song about your inflamed nervous system by using the instrumentation from Calvin Harris's song, Summer. That was a blatant violation of copyright, I'll admit. I presume to take material hard wrought by an artist I personally greatly admire and make it my own. Unbelievable, you may say. But that's just how Hank Green rolls, I'm afraid. I was not afraid, however, that the police would come knock knocking on my door. I knew it would be okay. Because for the last few years we have been living in a brief Brave new world of copyright law. For the people out there who, like me, are making content and find copyright confusing, this is the bizarre state of intellectual property in the United States in four minutes. Intellectual property is the idea that you can own things that aren't physical objects but are still things. There are three different ways to own intellectual property in the US. If you just create something, like I'm creating this video right now, then it's protected by copyright. It's less clear who would own this video in the event that it were a blatant copy of another video, but I digress. Ideas by themselves, though, cannot be copyrighted. They can be patented. The US government regulates patents. You have to apply for them and then be approved. Learning about the world of patent law is not unlike watching the movie Mulholland Drive. First you see the DVD box and you think, yeah, that must be pretty straightforward. And then you press play. I'm being told that you don't press play when you learn about the world of patent law. My metaphor was flawed. Finally, we have trademarks where you want to assign a picture or a set of words to a corporation or product. Like the siren logo and the phrase frack you are all trademarked by Starbucks. I'm being told that frack you is commonly attributed to Captain Kara Starbuck Thrace, not the Starbucks Coffee Corporation. Research is so difficult. Anyways, for the average person, copyright is the most interesting one of these, and it started out very simple. The idea was, hey, I made a bunch of words in a very specific order. Somebody else shouldn't be able to come along and put those same words in that same order and say, hey, this is my book. You can buy it from me. Uh -huh. Which is something that used to happen all the time. I mean, Charles Dickens was not very happy with America when he visited here in the 19th century because Dickens got nothing from the pirated books of his that were sold in America, and in fact, it was the Americans who were angry at him for even complaining about it. Does that sound familiar? Simple, it is not. So say I want to make a video on silence in contemporary cinema. I might want to use a clip from The Artist in order to help illustrate my point. That should be, and is, legal. It's called fair use. Basically, that's the use of copyrighted material for societal good. And it also has to be inside the part of another work that could could not exist in the same way without the copyrighted material. As I said before, it's much more of a technological solution than a legal one just because there's so much content on YouTube. It would be impossible for a single lawyer to look through all the content ever uploaded. So instead of that, YouTube has a thingy that looks at literally every video uploaded to YouTube and compares it with a huge amount of intellectual property. Every song ever released, every movie ever made, every TV show ever broadcast. It's called Content ID, and it's, man, a little bit of a miracle. So if I upload that video of me talking about silence in contemporary cinema and the artist clip is in there, Content ID will say, yes, the artist clip is in there. And then they'll give whoever owns the artist the rights to do whatever they want with the video. They could do nothing, they could take the video down, or they could monetize the video for themselves. It basically ends up like me paying a retroactive license for the use of the artist in my video. Now, in this case, I shouldn't have to do that because my use of the clip was probably fair use, and so I would dispute the claim saying it's fair use, and then, well, actually, I'm not so sure what happens then, but hopefully something good. But getting Back to my first point, this is basically why I can steal Calvin Harris' song and not worry about it. I don't get to monetize the video, and Calvin Harris does get to make money off the video I made, but at least this way I don't have to hammer out a deal with Calvin Harris's record label at 10 o'clock on Sunday night. But the big point here is that this is not the prettiest solution. What it is, is the most possible solution. I mean, I get to violate copyright without having to worry my YouTube channel is going to get taken down, YouTube doesn't get sued out of existence by giant corporations, and rights holders get another revenue stream with which to throw bigger and yet more fans fanciful yacht parties. Everyone, thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to reading your advice in the doobly-doo, John. I will see you on Tuesday.